Hey all, it's Philip from PR Moves back again for another weekly prediction video. We're going off of the Chicago Bears versus the Green Bay Packers week six. The Bears enter this game three and two, coming off of a two game win streak over the Lions as well as the Raiders. The Packers are coming off a four game win streak after losing humiliatingly to the Saints week one and then uh, beating up on the 49ers, the Lions, uh, the Bengals, <clears throat> and what was the fourth team they beat? The Steelers. So just outside of the Bengals, they haven't really played anyone big since their um, win over or since their loss to the Saints. So it's going to be uh, interesting how the Bears are able to attack them today. So we're going to jump right in. Let's look at the Bears receivers versus this Packers secondary. Now, this is a depleted Packers secondary. Jair Alexander's on IR. And Kevin King was ruled out with injury. So it is, once again, Allen Robinson, Darnell Mooney, Marquise Goodwin. Keep in mind, Allen Robinson is questionable for the game, but he did practice. So it's likely that he's going to play. Uh, Colt Komet at tight end, once again. But at running back, we have a third straight week. Uh, excuse me. Third straight week with a different starter. Uh, Damian Williams is on IR for COVID. So Khalil Herbert will be getting his first career start. Now, I am an avid Khalil Herbert person. I've always loved Khalil Herbert. Uh, go back and watch my most underrated running backs. I will always brag about that. So uh, go. super excited to see Khalil Herbert this week. But this Packers secondary, I'm not going to take it like lightly eric stokes has probably been one of the best rookie corners so far it's him asante samuel jr and greg newsome in cleveland are the three that come to mind um but stokes has played pretty well so far jane and sullivan in the slot is a ridiculously good player now if he's not playing in the slot he's below average he's not terrible he's better than kevin king um in my opinion but and then their third corner a lot of Packers fans that I was talking to disagreed on who the third corner would be, but I'm going with Shamar Jean Charles. I believe they're a rookie um, who would be getting the start at corner number three. So they'd have two rookie corners, but these safeties are also pretty good as well. You got Darnell Savage, uh, who picked off uh, Mitchell Trubisky, what, three times last year? And then Adrian Amos, who always seems to come up with one or two big plays per game, even if he's not a superstar level player. So the Packers secondary, uh, even depleted, I think is still going to be pretty solid. I'm not going to count them out of this game for any reason. So I'm going to be sticking with this. Uh, I think our receiver should get open, but I expect the secondary to make a few good plays throughout the game. And that brings us to the Packers receivers versus our secondary. Now our secondary has been lucky to not go down with injuries. Uh, Johnson, Vildor, Shelley, Eddie Jackson, Deshaun Gibson, the same five starting secondary. Um, keep in mind that they do consistently rotate in DeAndre Houston Carson and Deion Bush at safety. So that's good to know as well um, that we have a fresh rotation in at all times. But this Packers receiving core is also missing one of its most deadly targets, Marquez Valdez-Scantling. But they have the best receiver in the league in Devontae Adams. Randall Cobb is consistently a pain in the Chicago Bears side. I don't think I even need to point that out. Alan Lazard um, has kind of been bad this year compared to last year at least, but he's nothing to scoff at. Robert Tunyon is one of their perfectly schemed players. I don't think he's overly impressive as a tight end, but he can, finds a way using the plays the floor dries up draws up to get open and then there's aaron jones who's arguably a top five running back in the nfl um so this packer skill positions are super good um but this bear secondary has gotten it feels like they've gotten better every single week um they were very good against uh, cincinnati they were pretty good against cleveland for, until the offense completely disappeared um they were pretty good against the Lions as well, and then they were pretty good also against the Raiders. So they've been pretty good every single week, but 
Uh, I think just looking at it face value, I would say the Packers receivers have a pretty significant advantage in this case. But that moves us on to the, I think this is where the game is going to be won, is who gets pressure on the quarterback. Uh, Fields and Rodgers both have had um, inexperienced offensive lines, but one has been well coached and one hasn't. So let's look right at it. This Packers front seven also kind of depleted. No Zadarius Smith. Preston Smith's hobbled, but Preston Smith's playing pretty well right now. Um, this should be the debut of Jalen Smith, the former Dallas Cowboy, as a middle linebacker. He pairs with Devondre Campbell, who, uh, I mean, Joe Bear is a former linebackers coach. Um, so it's kind of funny that now one of their strengths on their defense is their linebackers when that was like their uh, weakness uh, last year and the year before. But then their defensive line, Ke uh, Kenny Clark is pretty good. Dean Lowry had a very good week against the uh, Bengals last week. And then Kingsley Kiki is a very good run stuffer. But overall... This offensive line has played pretty well over the past two weeks. They've neutralized um, Aquara. Sorry, I forgot his name. They neutralized Romeo Aquara, Michael Brockers, Max Crosby, um, Yannick Ngakwe. All were pretty um, neutralized in the past two games. Um, so they've bounced back from an absolutely horrific uh, week three performance. Uh, this front seven still scares me, though, and I think Fields is going to have to play nearly perfect to um, kind of make up for any mistakes that the offensive line goes through. But, um, yeah, Jason, it's the same offensive line. Elijah Wilkinson will be getting the start, uh, because, but I don't think he's that much of a downgrade from Jermaine Effetti, so I'm not worried about it. Um, but I, I, our offensive line is super interesting because they played very good week one against the Rams and they played pretty good week two against the Bengals and they were so bad against the Browns like the worst offensive lineman performance in history and then they've been pretty good again like they haven't been the worst offensive line in the league since the Browns game so we'll have to see I think the Packers will be able to get pressure but uh it'll be more interesting on the other side of the football. Uh, the Bears front seven, we've seen a lot of it this season. Akeem Hicks, Eddie Goldman, Bilal Nichols. I decided to throw Chris Tonga in there as well at defensive tackle because he has played a lot and in the game against the Raiders. Um, Goldman and Tonga kind of split time, so I just included Tonga in there as an extra defensive tackle. Our outside linebackers, Mack and Quinn, both top 10 in sacks. Sean Desai schemed up uh, pass rushes for them beautifully. So um, that's just excellent work um, by him. And then our middle linebackers, Roquan Smith, Alec Ogletree. Can't forget Danny Trevathan as well. He's back and fully healthy. So this front seven, I think we have one of the best front sevens in the entire league. I don't think it's necessarily close. Even Angelo Blackson, Mario Edwards, there's guys who are top 15 in the league in pressures that aren't even on uh, this sh short overview of the positions so i think the bears have arguably the best front seven in the entire league and then the packers offensive line they seem to every year get hit with a string of injuries or retirements or something stupid this year it was cory lindsley leaving and no uh, frank wagner coming back and they drafted josh myers who he's been, been pretty good but creed humphrey's been like one of the best offensive linemen in football this year so even though I said in that video of going over the NFC North draft classes that I think Josh Myers will probably end up being good. I think Creed Humphrey literally would have been an all pro in this offensive line. Um, but John Runyon, Royce Newman, Billy Turner, all guys are drafted, homegrown, have once again developed. Elgin Jenkins taking Bakhtiari's injured spot at left tackle. Josh Myers stepping in and being a, probably a top 10 center this year. This offensive line always finds a way to be exceptionally good. And even though this Bears front is, I believe, one of the most deep and one of the most experienced in the league, they're gonna have a rough time getting to Aaron Rodgers. But if they can, it's going to make this game a lot easier. If they can get to Rodgers and force him to get the ball out quicker and you don't give Devontae Adams a chance to run his deep routes because he's one of the best route runners in the league, and you take away Aaron Jones as much as possible, I think the Bears would be giving themselves the best chance to win, and that all starts with the pass rush. 
But that moves us on to the final predictions. And yes, I think the Packers win this game. I, I love the Bears team, but there are too many times when I have gone into Packers games way too overly confident and I've gotten my heart broken and it makes me angry. I'm not doing that this time. So I do think Rodgers goes in and has a good game. I do think we neutralize Aaron Jones for the most part. We have one of the best run defenses in the league. I think Devontae still pretty much goes off. I think can see like eight catches, 120 yards and a touchdown. Um, Tunyon always gets just some random touchdown. So I think he would be the other person catching a touchdown. Uh, and I have Preston Smith getting a sack, but you could probably get three or four sacks on this offensive line if you're the Packers front seven. Um, and just the inexperience of the Bears offense, Fields is only in his fourth ever start. Um, again, this is probably the best team he's played. So actually, Cleveland's the best team he's played defensively. But in terms of total team and team chemistry, this is probably the best team he's played so far. Um, so I think he probably has one of his best games of his career, but I don't think it's going to be anything special. Um, Khalil Herbert goes off and gets 80 yards. I don't know if that's on 18 carries or whatever. Uh, Allen Robinson, I think, finally has his first big game. I've been saying that for a few weeks now, but I think he's due for a big game. And I think once Fields starts passing the ball a little bit more with impunity, I think Allen Robinson will be the guy that he goes to. Uh, and then Roquan Smith, I see having a big game tackle-wise. I think he's going to be matched up against guys like uh, Robert Tunyon, Randall Cobb, and Aaron Jones, who are kind of the unsung heroes of that Packers team. Uh, and then Robert Quinn, I think Mack is going to be limited, which is why I don't think he grabs a sack in this game. Uh, so I think Quinn is going to be the one who gets most of that damage. But yeah, I think the Packers win this game 26-19. Um, I got my first prediction wrong last week, saying that the Raiders go off and win with a similar score to this. And I hope that I'm proven wrong again. I would love to be proven wrong. But I just don't think the Bears talent-wise match up against the Packers. I think Matt LaFleur is a much better coach than Matt Nagy is. I think their offensive line is considerably better. And I think even with their injuries their defense matches up against our offense better than our defense matches up against their offense. So that concludes it. So I have the Packers winning 26, 19. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I'll catch you guys all tomorrow after the game. The game's at 1 PM at soldier field bears wearing throwback uniforms. Still get hyped for the game. If you're going to the game, be loud, do everything possible to make this package team uncomfortable. Um, but everyone bear down, peace out. Everyone have a good weekend.